Brother uh, John Thresher, who uh, I've had the opportunity to get to know a little bit better the last couple of days. We've corresponded uh, over the last few years. When you look back on your time as an undergraduate at Florida State and SIGEP and the role the fraternity played in that time of your life, you especially enjoyed that time as you should. You participated in intramurals representing your chapter, working with your brothers, and you treasured the bonds that you formed while living in the house for two and a half years. But you also worked very hard because you had to work your way through school. Doing well in school was always a family priority and your priority. And you also served as an officer in the chapter. But it wasn't easy. You had to juggle successfully academics, participation in the fraternity you loved, while putting yourself through school, which meant you had to work. One of your favorite jobs, I've been told, was working as a server on campus at some of the sorority houses. I can't imagine why that was attractive. One of the favorite things that you remember was the connections you used to brag, I have a real connection to Greek life as a result of that. But you also had the opportunity to earn money and get some very good free food. After graduation from Florida State, you completed a management training program with an insurance company before joining the Army. And it was while serving in the military that you achieved your first, first big professional accomplishment. When you were selected over hundreds and hundreds of other military to serve as the lead aide to the commanding general of the U.S. Army Medical Centers in Germany. You didn't know it, but then you spent the next two years traveling with that general throughout Germany, throughout Europe, organizing the schedule, preparing the needed briefings. In this role, you called on all of the skills that you developed during the time that you were an officer in the undergraduate chapter, where you organized events, handled finances, managed relationships to ensure to ensure that everything ran smoothly. You received the Army's really high award of Commendation Medal in recognition of the work that you did in Germany, as well as two Bronze Stars for your service in Vietnam. Following that military service, you returned to the school that you loved, Florida State, your alma mater for law school, and enjoyed a career in private practice for several years before becoming the general counsel to the Florida Medical Association. Then in 1986, you made a fatal mistake. You ran for the local school board and won, and you got hooked with politics. That may have been a mistake to some, but to many throughout the state of Florida, it was cheered as a brilliant decision. Very soon after that, you campaigned for the state uh, House of Representatives in a 1992 won, and you won that election, and you went on to be elected three times, serving as the Speaker of the House in the state of Florida. You also went ahead and played a critical role in the passing of a bill to create a medical school for Florida State. Following that career, you also served as the first chairman in the Senate of, of the uh, committee that handled the budget for higher education, the budget of subcommittee on higher education appropriations. And those of us that are university presidents, we know how important that subcommittee can be. Your credit and experience that you gained and the relationships you developed during your career in the legislature really prepared you for 
the next step in your life. Your current position is president of Florida State University, which you proudly tell everyone was your dream job. Taking on that role has given you the opportunity to again directly impact your primary passion for education. Even as your career has transitioned from law to politics, and by the way, being a university president is still a political job today, you have remained committed to improving educational opportunity, particularly for veterans and for students with special needs. Since becoming the president at Florida State, you have led a successful $1 billion fundraising campaign that created over 1,300 scholarships on an ongoing basis, 100 endowed professorships that really will make a difference to the quality of your institution. Most importantly to everyone here today in SIGEP Nation, you've also been the lead voice among higher education officials in calling for reforms to make Greek life safer and more successful. After an unfortunate hazing death occurred on your campus, you called for a new normal because that behavior that you observed was unacceptable. A new normal for fraternities and sororities. A, a new normal that rewarded a safe culture and kind of emphasized personal growth. Encourage students to take the lead throughout your campus community and make a change. Across your campus and across the nation, you've inspired a lot of other institutions to begin to ask the same questions and take the same kind of courses of action. Brother John Thrasher, it is my personal pleasure and privilege and SIGIP's nation's honor to award you its highest award for professional achievement. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed, uh, for those very, very kind remarks. Uh, I'm overwhelmed and I appreciate it. You know, anybody who has been a university president for 27 years, as Ed has, is a remarkable individual. <laughs> I can assure you, this president won't be there 27 years. Brian and the Board of uh, Directors, thank you very much for this incredible honor. Uh, Brother Hammond, again, thank you, and I appreciate it. I've got to put these glasses on. Getting older has some advantages and some disadvantages. One of them is I've got to have cataract surgery a week from Monday, so I've got to wear these glasses until then. I apologize. Let me just say this. This is an incredible award and an incredible honor, and I'm very, very humbled by it. When I think about my journey as a kid, without a lot of direction, to this point in my life uh, where I was recognized along such distinguished men as Tom Benet, Billy Bowles, Gary Dudley, and Mike Watford. I am truly humbled. You know, Gary, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. There was some discussion about my academic back uh, studying and habits and all that. Uh, a lot of my friends in Tallahassee know that even a C student can become president of a university. I did a little bit better in law school, but again, I learned a lot during my four years that wasn't just related to academics. You know, uh, I, a lot's been said already by three very distinguished and certainly one to follow. I used to say when I was Speaker of the Florida House of Representatives, we had 120 members uh, in, that, in that body. Whenever we'd have a very contentious issue, uh, everybody would want to talk. And a lot was said over and over. So a lot of what you're going to hear again is some of the same things you've heard already. So everything's been said, but not by everybody. I, uh, I, I was at the uh, foundation dinner last night, 
and a young man, Brandon from Indiana State. I hope he's here. I don't know if he is or not. I want to give him a shout out. He kind of capsulized, in my opinion, what this fraternity has been doing for years and years and years. He talked about it in the present tense, but I can assure you this fraternity has been doing those kinds of things of nurturing young people, giving them the opportunity for leadership, doing all the things that matter in life that really do matter. Friendships, brotherhood, leadership, service, all of those things have been going on for many, many years. Growing up, I didn't know many people who went to college, and certainly no one in my family had ever gone to college, and neither of my parents went beyond the eighth grade. But with the encouragement and, a, and a, certainly a bit of help from my favorite relative, my aunt, I arrived on the campus of Florida State University in the fall of 1961. I was 17 years old. I'd never dreamed, I never dreamed that one day I would serve in the Florida legislature or become president of my alma mater. But I have to tell you, Brandon and other young men here, Sigma Phi Epsilon opened my eyes to the kind of men or man I could be and allowed me to see possibilities that I had never considered. I have to tell you, though, there was one other aspect of my life that, that made a difference in that particular time. Ed said that I lived in the fraternity house for two and a half years. I did, until I met my wife and got married my senior year. She took me out of the house. Uh, Billy Bowles, a happy birthday. But I have to say also to my wife, happy birthday tomorrow, darling. I appreciate you so much for being here. She and I will, this uh, December, celebrate our 55th anniversary. She'll tell you all about half those years have been pretty good, the ones I hadn't been in politics or doing something like this. But we've had a great life. I had a vague idea, frankly, of, uh, that, I, that I wanted to get involved in government and politics probably early in my life, but didn't know how to do it. Didn't know how to do it, really. SIGAP gave me the motivation, the confidence, and certainly the experience to pursue leadership opportunities, not only in the fraternity, but later in the Army and certainly throughout my career. I learned a lot about being in a fraternity. How to build relationships has been discussed. How to deal with financial and organizational issues. And yes, how to plan some really pretty incredible parties. These are all important skills, maybe the last one not as much as it used to be, but they're all very important in terms of leadership and your future. But perhaps the most important uh, of my experience at SIGEP gave me, and it gave me as an only child, I might add, was a whole bunch of brothers that were behind me and supported me from the very beginning. Again, last night, I saw that brotherhood come to life in person. Many of the folks that are here today made incredible contributions to the future of young men who aspire to be leaders not only in their university, in their fraternity, but certainly in our country. And the result of that, that effort last night, I'm sure will pay off in the long run for many, many years to come. I want nothing more, and I tell my students at Florida State this all the time, all 42,000 of them. I want nothing more than for them and other young men to have the same opportunity the same life-changing experiences that I had and so many of you had in your experience. That's why I've been a little outspoken about the need to shift the culture of greet life away from the unhealthy, dangerous behavior and put the focus on core values like academic achievement, leadership, philanthropy, service, and certainly brotherhood. I know that many of you heard uh, a presentation earlier in the week by Jim and Evelyn Piazza and Ray Ann Groover on Thursday, I believe. They spoke at my university last year along with the Coffee family, following really 
the tragic deaths of each of their sons around the country. Their message has been, I think, a wake-up call to all of us. I know, I know that Sig Epp has heeded that call and has joined me and, and many others around the country in our efforts to educate young men and women about what it means to foster an environment where everyone can have fun, make memories, but in a safe and healthy and respectful way. This is the most important thing I believe we can do right now as a Greek system, is to be the leaders of this particular effort. effort. Our campus leaders today are embracing this new culture, and I think our national leaders of tomorrow also are. And with all of you, the men of SIGEP, you are leading the way along with your great organization and the leadership in that organization. I want to particularly thank my friends from Florida Epsilon and our chapter at FSU for supporting me in my presidency and promoting positive change on the Florida State University campus. You guys exemplify the ideals of virtue, diligence, and brotherly love and you make me very, very proud to say I'm a SIG up. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.